If you need to fly to London, there are several airports to choose from, but only one takes you right into the heart of the UK capital. Today I'm in Dublin, Ireland, and I'm flying to London City Airport, which is exciting in itself, but what I'm more eager for is the aircraft. This will be my first view on this channel of the Avro RJ85, one of my favourite aircraft of all times, and I can't wait to get on board. So let's get into the terminal. Welcome to Blake Edgington Airborne. Let's get going. Opened in 2010, Terminal 2 is the home of Aer Lingus here in Dublin and the Irish National Airline dominates the check-in area which is well laid out and offers plenty of self-checking kiosks on the ground floor. Departures is found on the upper level where you'll find an impressive sculpture by Isabel Nolan and weirdly for the second week of January, Christmas decorations. Did someone lose their calendar? In my opinion, the designers of Terminal 2 really got it right and it's a very attractive facility. It has a fairly impressive selection of shops which include several airport regulars as well as stores specialising in Irish products and yes, that does include a Guinness store which I'm sure is popular with tourists. One floor above the main concourse is the obligatory airport Burger King, as well as a food court which features a great view of the terminal below. And speaking of views, these aren't bad either. So that's a little whistle stop tour through Dublin Airport Terminal 2 and I have to say I really do enjoy visiting this particular terminal. It's really modern, beautiful design, there's a good selection of shops and places to eat as well and I'd have to say even the security staff today were incredibly friendly so I definitely look forward to visiting here in future, maybe even for a long haul flight with Aer Lingus. But I'm not going too far today, let's head on board our flight to London. Aer Lingus operate an all Airbus fleet, which may sound weird considering this flight's not on an Airbus. Well that's because this flight is operated by Aer Lingus's regional partners CityJet. They provide aircraft and crew for this route, which is perfectly suited to this British built Avro RJ85. And for several years this was the only jet aircraft that could fly in and out of London City Airport. Times however have changed and newer jets are taking over, but while the RJ85 is still flying, let's see what it's like on board. Firstly though, how much does this flight cost? Flights on this route are booked via the Aer Lingus website and there are a number of departure times to meet passengers needs. I paid €48 Euros for my one way ticket which isn't too bad, but it wasn't quite as cheap as my Ryanair flight a couple of hours before, which incidentally you can see a review of on this channel. Enough about Ryanair though, let's get back to this flight. The RJ85 has 95 leather seats arranged 6 abreast and we'll look more closely at the seats soon. Given the age of the aircraft it's no surprise that the cabin is a little dated and lacking modern touches, but it does have a decent amount of space in the overhead lockers and the panel above your head is where you'll find reading lights as well as air vents. The first couple of rows are reserved for passengers in a higher fare class and a divider is present to protect them from the commoners like me behind. 
Passengers in the front rows also receive a complimentary snack from the onboard menu, which is chargeable for all other passengers. Sadly, there was no menu at my seat, but I did purchase a soft drink and a chocolate bar, which price-wise was on a par with many airlines in Europe, and the cup provided had a green tint to it, which I thought was a nice touch. I'm very easily pleased. With about half the flight gone, let's take a look at the seat that you can expect to find on board the RJ85. As you would expect, seat selection is available when booking with Aer Lingus, and depending on your fare class, a fee may be applied with seats at the front of the cabin costing a little extra. The seats are all the same design though, and as I mentioned earlier on, they are all finished in leather. Apart from a few stains, there isn't too much going on at the top of the seat, so we'll take a look at the tray table now, which is a basic design but does provide a good amount of room. There is a cup holder on the right of the table to keep your drink in place during turbulence, but there is no adjustment on this table, although to be honest, given the size of it, that's not a big issue. We'll take a look further down the seat now at the literature pocket, and there's plenty of space in here for my notebook, as well as the literature provided by Aer Lingus, which in this case is the safety card and in-flight magazine. The legroom was quite generous in my opinion, providing plenty of knee space as you can see, but it's worth mentioning that the seat is very narrow, and by squeezing in six seats per row on this aircraft, arm and shoulder space is a little bit of an issue on the RJ85. So if you'd like to experience the RJ85 with Aer Lingus and see if I'm right about the seat, where can you go? Well this aircraft only operates between Dublin and London City on a regular basis, but Aer Lingus do fly to over 100 destinations across Europe and North America, and I'm sure that I'll try a long haul flight from Dublin myself at some point. Speaking of future flights, don't forget that by following my social media accounts, you can keep up to date with my upcoming trips, as well as images from upcoming videos. So make sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter, and of course, please subscribe right here on YouTube. Quick flight today, the seatbelt signs are on as we're approaching London City Airport. Stick around till the end of the video for my final thoughts as always, but for now, enjoy the landing. And that's it, welcome to London after that flight across from Dublin. This is of course where I share with you my final thoughts on today's trip. Kicking things off at Terminal 2 Dublin Airport, and as I said earlier in the video, it is very impressive. I really do love the design of the airport. It's bright, it's clean, it's modern, it's quite spacious, and there's plenty to see and do. So I would not hesitate to travel through Terminal 2 again in future. I mentioned earlier on the video as well that all the staff, including at security, were very friendly, but that did sadly take a bit of a turn when I went to board the aircraft. The member of staff that was checking boarding cards and allowing us onto the aircraft, she may have been having a bad day, I don't know, but I tried to wish her a good day and I got completely ignored. Couldn't get a smile out of her from what I could see either, so a little bit disappointing. But thankfully the staff on board the aircraft were a different story. The cabin crew today, frankly, were a credit to both CityJet and Aer Lingus. They were very smart, very well presented, as well as incredibly hard working and friendly, so it's really nice to see. And then we come to the aircraft. 
Now we'll start off by looking at the seat. As you'd have seen from the video, the legroom for me was really, really impressive. What I would say about the seat though is it was a little bit dirty in places and also quite narrow. That wasn't helped by the fact that my row in particular was full, so it was quite tight around the shoulders. The cabin crew today, their service, well, they did make an announcement saying that there were menu cards in the seat pockets. Sadly, as you've seen from the video, I certainly didn't have one at least, but the service itself was timed very, very well. They worked hard, as I said earlier on, and not too bad value for money for what I had. The aircraft overall then, what did I think? It was one of my favorite aircraft before this flight, and it still is now. No, the RJ85 isn't one of the most modern jets in the sky today. Obviously, it's been replaced in some measure by lights of Embraer jets or Bombardier, and it doesn't quite have all the latest features, but it's still pretty comfortable overall, and it did bring back very fun memories from my days as a flight attendant, so I wouldn't hesitate to fly in it again. I hope you've enjoyed this video today. Please do leave me some feedback in the comment section below. Good or bad, I do read it all. And if you did enjoy it, do leave a thumbs up. Of course, if you're new around here and want to see plenty more aviation related videos, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. And most of all, take care.